We're straight getting into a first panel discussion as our speakers are here and the topic is hot. How do you attract young talent and retain them? This is a question everybody wants to wants answers for. So challenges, advantages of recognizing young talent, how to spot them early and new ways to retain them. This and so much more is going to be discussed in our first panel of the day. We have with us as our panelist, Sudipta Gupta, Vice President HR from The Practice. We have Lovina Gujral, COO from Canda Communication. We have Amit Arora, Head of Corporate and Communications and Public Relations from Housing.com. And moderating se the session is our very own editor of Exchange for Media, Mr. Ruhail Amin. I welcome all of you to the screen. A very warm welcome. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Khyati. Uh, uh, and thank you, everyone, uh, for joining us on this very first panel. And the discussion is so relevant, you know, I think uh, uh, with more opportunities, uh, millennials, especially the newer talent, you know, they have so many opportunities, so many places uh, to go. Staying loyal and retaining them, of course, uh, of course, we, we used to think it's an HR problem, but it's not just an HR problem. It is the problem of the brand and, and to address this is, is the need of the hour. So I want to uh, ask, start, uh, with you, Sudipta, uh, so how how do we tackle with this uh, problem of uh, you know retaining and uh, keeping the new talent engaged? I mean, what is the story that your uh, company is following, the approach that you're following to ensure that they stay loyal to you? And it's not just transactional, it's not just the next 10K hike and they leave it. How do we build that culture? What is your story like? Okay, uh, thanks for having me on this panel uh, with you know my esteemed uh, fellow panelists. Uh, so interestingly, uh, you know, I stand for an organization or I represent an organization that has been built on young talent. So all our uh, people who've groomed to the senior roles are all people who started off as executives with us, and we have always believed in placing our trust and nurturing young talent. Uh, this journey has just got tough over the years. Uh, however, I think, uh, you know, we have always taken that leap of faith and believed in the young talent. Uh, and uh, my experience has been, I think, the, the talent today in the, in the category of the zero to four years who's, you know, starting off, they are very clear about what they want. So I think the kind of work, the alignment to the culture and values and helping them see, you know, what is in it for them uh, is something that we have, you know, continually continued to do. Uh, I do feel that uh, as HR and as managers, our orientation of what's loyalty or what is the tenure that you look at has changed. So I think, you know, that is something we've reoriented ourselves. But I think uh, giving them the right opportunities, being transparent and uh, values and culture uh, is what will get someone to, you know, work with you or not work with you, in my opinion. Right. Uh, um, I'm sorry to pitch in here. Uh, my apologies. We also have on our panel, Mr. Rahul Mehta, CEO, Media Mantra. Uh, my apologies of missing that out. A very warm welcome to you, Mr. Mehta. I was just going to Rahul, you know, I was just going to <laughs> ask Wonderful. him a question. Go ahead. Uh, Rahul, uh, I, I wanted to ask you about, you know, uh, the media mantra story of, uh, you know, I get a lot of calls, by the way, from young PRs, you know, and I, or as much as, uh, I mean, I may not be able to answer them, but I make sure that I respond to them. How do you ensure, you know, uh, they stay loyal to the company and, uh, you know, to understand the larger vision of an organization is not possible, I think, at an entry level. So how do we engage? Uh, what are the best ways that, you know, organizations can uh, offer uh, to new talent, uh, you know, for, for them to stay loyal, to be there at least for two to three years minimum? I think uh, it's a combination of different facets. Uh, so uh, first of all is the work culture that we uh, kind of imbibe in the company a very friendly uh, political work culture which is based on meritocracy and also uh, the fact that we have an open door policy with the senior management uh, people can come in give feedback 
uh, ideation about anything and the senior management listens uh, we also have a fun work culture uh, we do you know initiatives to engage employees every month and let them have a bonding with the company uh, we also uh, you know of course reward performers we have you know annual award events recognizing top performers which you know uh, is something that the employees appreciate uh also uh, in all the awards that media mantra has been winning over all these years you would notice that in the actual team which has done the work goes on stage and accepts those awards it's not the senior management that goes but it's them it's for them to feel the sense of ownership as well it's, it's for them to feel the sense of achievement so i think it's a combination of all these facets but i do believe that you know employees are your greatest advocates and happy employees help get you more young talent on board because they spread the positivity about the company in the industry amit uh, the housing.com approach uh, for retaining young and uh, attracting uh, and retaining young talent what is that yeah hi hi everyone uh, you know uh, thank you so much for uh, you know inviting us here uh, rohel i think uh, i would like to uh, before that you know i think i would like to state here that you know uh, you know a recent report by the recruitment agency michael page you know they have uh, stated that uh, you know around 61% of employees in india are uh, willing to accept a lower salary or uh, forgo a pay you know basically for to to have a better life uh, you know to as uh, dr anurag batra just said that you know they are more responsible they want to give back you know to to lead a happier life and uh, again you know one more that uh, you know Amrish uh, Rao of uh, Fine Lab. He recently tweeted uh, uh, that you know the average life cycle has uh, come down to one and a half year for uh, for an employee. Hence, uh, you know, and and the reason is that uh, they they don't uh, hence, you know, uh, they need to spend time in uh, in a relationship. And uh, with the pandemic, I think it's uh, become uh, very challenging for all the organization to to build a strong relationship. hence uh, you know i think it's very important for all the organization like in, uh, in our organization also the people uh, and the culture are uh, are our are, are our top priority uh, hence uh, you know it's important that you build a great workplace for organization and people at the bottom of the pyramid uh, need to be given that importance and need to be given that independence Uh, which is which is obviously uh, you know it has to come through uh, the leadership and uh, hence it ha- the the vision has to be crystal clear to each and every individual of the organization i think that is very important for any organization to to thrive and to grow yeah okay right lavina uh, your uh, what is your approach like uh, at your organization uh, first this then i have a set of uh, questions for you so firstly thank you very much for having me very happy to be part of this panel um at candor uh, i mean pretty much everyone's covered all the basic important things right we've all been in this industry so the needs and requirements of people are pretty similar across all companies in this uh, uh, industry uh, i would just like to add that at candor we have a pretty flat structure we don't have designations so that that is our way of ensuring that you know we are all on the same uh, you know level we are all on the same playing field yes experience of the seniors matters but what we look at is that experience is here to guide and develop the youngsters and help them imbibe uh, you know and learn about what is important in the industry what works but once they are there we re- also recognize that the most important thing that makes people stick to an organization is whether you you know give them a sense of self esteem now how do you give them that you give them that by involving them in everything so we don't have a you know a practice wherein the lower levels or the youngsters have to do the bulk of the you know the basic work once they show the ability to learn the ability to deliver we are happy to put them in front of the client whether with one year of experience two years of experience our company also has been built with many who have been with the organization ever since it was started many for whom it was their first job and today after 7 8 years of experience they are uh, you know they are doing 
extremely well. They are very happy where they are. Um, you know, even people who have uh, moved on after a few years, say four or five years, uh, always have, you know, remained connected with us. And that's all we can really expect, right? We can expect that so long as they're, they are here with us, their experience is one which is full of learning, one which is full of contribution, one which where they feel valued and mattered and all of those things. And that is the kind of culture basically that we imbibe. Okay. So, uh, you know, attracting them is one thing, but holding on to them, I think that is where the organizations really play a larger part. I want to come to you, Amit, start my next round with you, you know, because you mentioned uh, uh, about organizational culture, you know. So, uh, if you see the life cycle of a typical career has changed now, you know, it's not the same what it used to be. Attrition is a norm. HR uh, HRs, you know, worldwide accepted, you know, that uh, the, the average age uh, that a that, uh, career span at, a, at an organization has really come down to two, 2.5 years. Can organizational culture change that, you know? Uh, what are the best ways to build that organizational culture where people stay with you, they stay loyal to you, they are not swayed by... Uh, every second offer that comes their way. Uh, thanks, Royal. Uh, you know, I think this is uh, very close to me. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I'm sure everyone, uh, you know, I'd like to start with an analogy. You know, earlier, uh, the messages used to uh, take, you know, uh, uh, not less than uh, four to five weeks. Like if you send a message to a foreign country, you know, through, through a mail, like a written mail, uh, it used to take three to four or five weeks to reach there. So we, uh, you know, our age, we grew up in the age of emails, you know, and now yeah. the time has changed. We, we are, uh, you know, uh, the today's generation is uh, screenagers. They are, they are on, they're on the screens all the time, be it uh, their cell phones, be it their TVs, you know, they are, they're on the social media all the time. So, so I think things have changed. So we need to, uh, you know, we need to accept uh, that, you know, that the time has changed. It doesn't take uh, much of time for, hence we need to engage uh, with the, our audiences at all the level, at different, at a different level and keep engaging with them. Uh, you know, earlier uh, the, the you know the the review process also used to be like annually which now has changed it has come to monthly and from monthly now there are policy like we have internal policy wherein uh, you know we have a platform wherein you can uh, you know we we give a very importance to feel at home and the 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 moment you don't uh, feel like home you know you can go on our internal platform and you can post a message and, uh, you know, housing.com's internal platform where uh, you can say that, uh, you know, I'm not feeling at home. So, so that life cycle has changed. It is, uh, the, the, as I said that, you know, Amrish mentioned in his tweet that uh, it has come down to one and a half year. So you need to have a process to ensure that the meaningful relationships are built and meaningful connect is built uh, among the employees and with the organization. That's very important, I think. Uh, so, Dipta, uh, well, well, how can, you know, uh, an uh, organizational culture address uh, the problem of retaining, you know, talent and, and keeping them engaged? Yeah, so I think Amit has, you know, covered some very, very valid points, but um, I have also seen a lot of uh, ex-employees and we've, we've always had that record of a lot of ex-employees wanting to re-engage with us through their career. And I think that the one thread that has been binding that is the culture. So I do think that apart from, you know, all the hygiene that you do, uh, I think Rahul also spoke about, you know, the policies, recognition and all of that that we do. But I do think that walking the talk and, not, and, you know, I think, of course, transparent and open communication, but actually walking the talk and, you know, just living all of that up uh, brings in a lot of credibility and connect. And, uh, you know, I think agility is another thing that, uh, you know, Amit spoke about. Everything today has become so fast. So 
you know how how agile you are how are you adapting and how you're kind of walking the talk and actually showing uh, you know employees what is in it for them and where they are going and i think uh, we uh, you know when people come to us possibly with their aspirations you know people who maybe joined us fresh out of college or maybe after a couple of years and if they're exploring you know studying abroad or doing other things we actually kind of have you know senior people who mentor them and guide them through that journey even if it is maybe taking up something else down the line uh, so i think uh, that is what i would say i think you know the the life cycle has the left life cycle has come down but how deep and how uh, quality qualitatively can you engage does i think leave an impact uh, with right Uh, Rahul, uh, your take on this culture part, you know, uh, what are the what are the best ways uh, to to build that culture? I think I would agree with what Sudhita said of walking the talk. Uh, saying that employees are like family is just a statement, but actually actioning that in terms of your what you do for them is what matters to them. So, you know, just to take the example of the lockdown, uh, you know. Uh, i do know people in the industry and i think a significant chunk of the industry and agency saw salary cuts during that time uh, we as an agency did not do even a 1% salary cut to our employees uh, we retained them on the current salaries we did explain to them that we couldn't afford to give them increments that year but they were more than happy because they knew the industry colleagues had all got salary cuts and post the pandemic you know when the business picked up again we actually gave them very good increments they, they they understand that the company cares about them and uh, i think that's what matters so i also see a very very friendly very open work culture with a lot of positive vibes in media mantra i think that's what helps us retain talent that's what helps us reengage talent when they leave they want to come back so i think it's, the, it's just the management philosophy of making sure that we have, we are taking care of our employees and we're giving them the opportunities to grow with the open you know uh, open door culture employees can come in and even ask for horizontal movements so somebody from servicing team wants to join join the digital team we get them training with we help that lateral movement also somebody wants to move from the content team to the servicing team so all of that is possible here and you know it's a very very open door policy very friendly policy a very friendly work culture so i think all of this as a amalgamation really helps us to retain employees and them as advocates helps them to us to get more younger talent on board right Uh, Lavina, uh, how do you see this correlation between uh, culture and retaining and attracting talent? Definitely, I mean uh, it's a direct correlation. People will stay on only when they are happy with the culture that they are part of, right? Uh, you may join a company bases, you know, the job profile or the offer on the table, etc. But they will stay on only because of the culture. the kind of experience they have how their interactions are on the on a daily basis you know especially at that level the 0 to 4 years level are we making them feel important now, uh, enough are we recognizing every contribution that they make whether it's in you know and we are a fairly uh, you know we are a boutique agency so to speak so we are not very large in uh, terms of number of people but uh, we therefore so we have uh roles which allow you to gain experience across multiple uh dimensions in the in the pr role right so there is client servicing there is content there is media relations there is all of that and uh, thankfully during the pandemic years we are you know maybe we were one of the fortunate ones our business actually grew so people got increments people got bonuses people got all of that and that made people feel that yes we are not you know because we as an agency did fine we passed it on to our people we did not if we wanted we could have followed the industry norm and you know clamp down on maybe increments or something like that but we did not see the need to de- uh, do so and i think that is something people appreciate um and even now uh, you know one of the important things to people at this um, at this band is flexibility so we are still in a hybrid format we are still you know work from home there are kids who are still back home in the uh, you know in the smaller towns where they actually come from so all of those things are there and this is only being this is only possible this is only successful for us because there is a very high degree of trust 
right? Even sitting in a remote location, you are, are you involved? Are you taking up your job seriously? Are you making the contribution that you're required to make? And yes, if you're ticking all of those boxes, we trust you completely as an organization and we are happy to reward that. That's the kind of culture that we have. So it works both ways, right? A company is a culture. It's the people who add to that culture and keep it alive and keep it thriving. So there has to be contribution from both ends. So if you are going to say that only the management is respons responsible for building a culture and therefore it's our job to retain people, that's only half that's the a picture. Important point. I think, yeah. uh, I, think I, I'm, I want to touch upon it and come to you, Amit. One is this part, you know, when we talk about culture, we think it's the bosses, you know, it's their responsibility. We are not part of it. You know, culture belongs to them. Is this mindset actually prevalent? I mean, I want to one understand from you. Second, you mentioned somewhere, you know, if I correctly remember, that the mindset has shifted from just paycheck. You know, you see the other benefits. You know, are you getting flexible hours? Are you getting time for yourself? You know, it's not just about the paycheck. Have these mindset shifts taken place? Also, is the mindset still the same that the culture belongs to the bosses? It's their problem. See, I would, uh, you know, I would like to, uh, you know, start here uh, with a with a very, uh, you know, funny kind of uh, chatter which we keep on hearing on social media and also on the ground when you're in office. Uh, Although not regularly nowadays, because uh, you know we are uh, at housing, we are a hybrid mode. Uh, organization so uh, the, the the interesting chatter which we keep on hearing that you know i am taking a call you know but, uh, you know whenever it is needed i am i'm taking a call at 9 pm uh, so why am i not uh, supposed to you know post a reel uh, on instagram at uh, 11 am so you know the 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 mindset has to change we we need to look at the bigger bigger picture that, you know, things have changed, things are evolving so much, you know, as I said, uh, you know, hence the expectations have to be changed. You, you can't be, uh, you know, having a mindset of, uh, you know, the, the 10 or 15 year uh, earlier that, you know, when you're in office, it's a nine to five job. So it is, and even, uh, you know, nine to five is, is no more, even, uh, even for, uh, for the people who are working in a public sector. You know, you you call up nowadays any any public sector employee, be it government uh, organization or be it uh, any bank or anything. So so they'll tell you the story. So hence uh, the you know expectation are changed. You got to you know evolve uh, your organization culture and uh, the individual need to be trained and uh, not only at the junior level at the senior level. You need to be trained and the the mental. Uh, you know, thing has has to change overall. That's what I think. absolutely. So, Dipta, what has been your observation of the new mindset at work? Are people driven by paychecks, or are they driven by uh, you know maybe a flexible space? Uh, I mean, where they can be the, themselves. You know, uh, also uh, the culture part. You know, do people still think that you know? Let HR worry about the culture bit, you know. I mean, it's not my, you know, responsibility. Uh, I'm, I'm trying to understand your observation of the current workplace as far as the young talent is concerned. Yeah, uh, so definitely it's, it's, it's nobody sees it as an HR or a, you know, a boss's thing. I think, you know, people expect it from everybody they deal with. And I'm going to bring in another key element here, which uh, I'm sure everybody would agree with is apart from everything that we do here for our people, I think in the public relations industry, I think the kind of clients, the kind of client dynamics, the kind of relationship and the kind of exposure people are getting is also a big factor in you know, how they kind of uh, enjoy their role and uh, you know, look forward to staying. So I think that's a big element. And I would say that uh, managers have an important role to play there. Uh, so I think, uh, you know, people right now, uh, I think they look at it in totality while they, you know, are happy with the culture and everything. They just see how much they can learn. And if, they're, if their managers are as people they would aspire to be. So I think it's a combination of all of this that, uh, that, is, that is kind of 
people are expecting. Right. Rahul, I mean, you are dealing, you have uh, team members who are millennials, youngsters who have joined. Uh, what is their mindset like, you know, as far as this sector is concerned, you know? Uh, how do you read them if you have to, you know, kind of uh, share few traits and expectations they have from the workplace, you know? Uh, what have you observed uh, individually? I think uh, it is an age and day of individualism and everybody comes with their own personalities. Personalities, But the one thing you see in common is that they do want an uh, opportunity to learn, they do want an opportunity to grow and they do want an opportunity to be heard and uh, to be recognized. So I think it's a combination of all of these and uh, uh, also the fact that you know there's a chance to learn new skill sets. So, you know, so what we do is what we make sure is that, you know, on basis feedback from the teams, we actually organize external trainers who come in and train our teams on different skill sets, helps them grow. Uh, also, I think one thing that does, you know, kind of motivate them is that their company is constantly in, in, in news with positive news, growth led news, new clients coming in all the time, you know, the award wins, the culture. So I think it's a combination of all of these, but uh, us, us recognizing their personalities, us helping them to grow, uh, this is their own individual requirements. I think that's what matters to them a lot. Uh, so it's an overall mix. I think uh, we have done it successfully for our employees and which is the reason why we attract good talent and we retain them. Lavina, any uh, insights to share what you have observed? Um, yes, I would just like to just add that, you know, uh, I think the in terms of talent, we are at a little cusp wherein, you know, there is the younger generation, which has been brought up, like everybody mentioned, on a whole new set of dynamics from where we, you know, which is different from where we come from, right? So we are at a, a, a juncture where we are both trying to understand each other and help each other out uh, to the maximum, to the best possible uh, way. I think that things are progressing. I think that we are becoming the, you know, the sort the management, so to speak, in most agencies, which is pretty much our uh, age group, is becoming more accepting of uh, the new generation's requirements, their uh, understanding, what is important to them, their goals, etc. And the younger generation also, uh, all due credit to them, they're stepping up, they're learning. Uh, it's just that they look for more instant gratification and PR is more of a slow burn kind of a profession. But when it does burn up over a few years, it's pretty bright. So, uh, you know, uh, like Sudhita spoke about the kind of experiences, the kind of uh, clients that you get to interact with, their management, etc. Those kind of things are not, um, you know, not something that you get in too many professions. So, um, my advice to the younger generation would just to be, you know, hang in there, do the learning, and it will be a very, very rewarding career in a few years. Great. Um, we have uh, around 10 minutes left. So let me uh, pose my final question, uh, starting with you, uh, Amit. Uh, you know, we are fully powered by a hybrid work culture, uh, which means at times we are not available in person. And that emotional connect, you know, and that hand holding is not there, you know, the way it should be. Uh, in such a setup, uh, dealing with new talent, uh, has it become, uh, how have you adjusted to this one and ensured that the connect stays, even if there are new people joining the organization? They don't feel that uh, they don't have uh, the guidance of the senior colleagues uh, there. So how do you try to bridge this gap? Uh, yeah, thanks. So, uh, see, I think uh, it's very uh, important that uh, you build a process of learning, you know, uh, in the organization, which is very important. Like, for example, at housing.com, we have a separate learning platform, which wherein, you know, everybody has to, each and every uh, individual has a set of bases, uh, their role, they have a skill set. And, uh, you know, before, before you, uh, you know, get into your role there is a proper uh, there is a proper training which you have to go through which is personal training plus at the same time you have to uh, finish those uh, skill set uh, things so that actually helps in bridging and and, uh, and each and in each and every individual of our organization at housing are 
being allocated uh, mentors which are not uh, in their role or uh, which are, which are not uh, in a, specifically i would say which are not in uh, part of their team or their extended team so i think that helps in uh, bridging the gap uh, which you which you are that, that helps right. so that the uh, yeah, I think uh, we do have a lot of what Amit spoke about in, on, in terms of an L&D platform, but I think what uh, we have seen is, I think, uh, connects multiple touch points, um, you know, larger team touch points in terms of people working on similar clients. Uh, one of the initiatives that we actually started during uh, the COVID time and, you know, it, we continue to do is a peer-to-peer -peer connect because uh, we somewhere felt that over the years, you're always talking top down or, you know, bottom up. But how are you getting people at the same level across uh, various locations and clients to come together and share their experience? So we've seen that do very well because people then, you know, know that they have such a big system of people within uh, at their level doing so many things whom they can reach out to who've grown, some are new in the organization. So all of that, uh, and I think our uh, senior managers and, you know, above have taken a lot of efforts in doing multiple uh, levels of connects with groups, teams, formally, informally, and even on the HR side, we've done all of that. And we did do, uh, we do a good amount of internal comms as well. So we have very specifically done campaigns uh, on values and various other things uh, you know, through this period for people to kind of understand these softer aspects. Uh, so I think, uh, yeah, some of those things is what we've kind of done. Rahul, has uh, hybrid culture made it difficult for that hand-holding and emotional connect to happen or has it, have organizations found a way to deal with it? I think when there was a full lockdown in place and everybody was working from home, uh, that time initially there was an adaptation required and uh, you know uh, one thing we did was we made sure that the team was connected virtually on a daily basis in in from in, in terms of the intra teams as well as you know uh, every week doing some kind of a hr initiative to engage the whole team uh, virtually being on call with them you know listening to them uh, being empathetic to them as well so i think over in that phase uh, it was uh, we actually managed a smooth sailing during that phase but right now uh, we do have a flexible work policy, but most of our employees actually choose to come to office because I think they like coming to office. It's a very positive work culture. So currently we do not face that challenge. Uh, but when we did have that limitation, we actually were able to manage and, and keep our employees engaged and retain them as well. Right. Uh, final words from you, Lavina. Uh, I think... Uh... What I would say is that there is a you know, huge amount of learning in this uh, industry. There is huge amount of opportunity, the kind of uh, you know, role that one can grow into. It's the, uh, you know, the opportunities are varied. They are uh, with all these you know, international uh, agencies here now and uh, we are becoming more and more relevant, more so in the post pandemic era. I think it's a great industry to be in. Uh, I think that, uh, you know, it's just a mindset that one needs to have, the mindset of, that, of the fact that you want to be successful, that you are open to learning. All of those things from this generation is what we expect. As organizations, it is our job to handhold, train, whether in a hybrid, remote, or in office mode. Modes uh, after a certain point don't really matter. One can connect with people if you really want to. There are enough and more tools around these days to make that connect and people are doing it. Uh, but it's just that one thing I would like to point out is that what uh, you know this little upheaval has done is that people there are uh, enough people who have been jumping jobs for the sake of money. So my only advice to them is don't do it. It is something which will catch up uh, in your career, in your career graph over a period of time. So stability is important, especially because these are your learning years. So learn, stay at a place, learn, and then make a move if you have to, no problem about that, but don't be jumpy. That always reflects, uh, that does not reflect well. And uh, yeah, I think it's a great culture that um, the PR industry is, and these kind of forums where, you know, uh, recognitions, you're recognizing people are, under 30 years of age, 
So that in itself is a huge uh, industry level recognition that they are able to get for themselves. Not too many uh, industries have things like this. So yeah, enjoy PR to the maximum. So I have five more minutes. So one, I need a one line answer uh, from all of you. Uh, quick suggestion, uh, Amit, uh, for ensuring that you attract young talent and retain them in one line. Yeah, I think uh, as an organization, you need to define that, you know, you understand employers, uh, give them a flexible workplace, uh, you know, uh, uh, wherein uh, you provide a meaningful uh, interaction and relationship and, uh, you know, uh, uh, creating a great place to work. Yeah, that, okay. that's very important. So, Dipta? I just say, approach it with raising the bar of talent for the industry. I think that's what we've done. And uh, I think just stick to that. And uh, just one more point I wanted to make. I do think that, and this has come up in various industry forums, I do think the public relations career uh, does need to do some PR for its own self with academia and others, because I think a lot of the young talent is, is not really, you know, seeing, is not really understanding it. So I think, uh, you know, uh, that that would be a point that I'd just like to make. Yeah. Rahul? I think uh, the one point is that make them feel empowered and make them feel like family. Uh, and by empowered, I mean what they say to us as, as an organization is heard and is actioned. Uh, make, and, and that automatically translates into the fact that they are a part of the company's family and we are all one family. I think the moment we are able to imbibe that feeling in an employee, they will stick longer and they will always be there for the company. Okay. Loving it. Yeah, I'll just like to uh, end with, you know, there is uh, about self-esteem. Uh, so I think self-esteem of the youngsters means a great deal to them. Uh, I think we should be very mindful uh, on a daily basis. We need to ensure that they are getting the learnings that they need, that the work that they're doing is being recognized and or, and on an open forum, like, uh, you know, whatever is the format that you implement in your organization, uh, make sure that, you know, whatever a person does well is spoken about, is uh, ex uh, articulated to others as an example, uh, you know, so that peer-to-peer -peer, uh, inspiration also comes in from that point of uh, view. Uh, but yes, like uh, Sudipta said, PR industry needs to uh, do a little bit of PR for themselves. PR doesn't. PR as an industry is very secure in business. Uh, we need more talent is the key word, and we need solid talent. We need talent that is open to learning because the growth opportunities are immense. So, you know, our uh, my only word, this thing would be all the people, all the youngsters who are attending this. Tell your friends, bring them in. Thank you so much. And, and the beauty of this discussion was that, uh, I mean, we discussed something which earlier uh, we might have thought that only HRs could relate to, but it's such, such a great thing that people first approach is being taken at all forums. And, and thank you for, uh, I mean, doing this, Karan. And thank you, my uh, esteemed uh, panelists, Amit, uh, Sudipta, Rahul, and Lavina for joining us on this first discussion. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, everyone. Have a good day.